Equations for Linear Homogeneous Isotropic Waveguide Analysis. From the last video, this is the starting point that we derived. Now, there are a lot of field components. It is six coupled partial differential equations. This is a rather complicated situation. But there's a really clever way to simplify this down and minimize the number of terms that have to be solved. It turns out, without any approximations, it's possible to put all of the tangential components of the fields so EX, EY, HX, and HY. And I call these tangential because we're going to let the waveguide be in the Z direction. But it's possible to put all of these four terms just in terms of E naught Z and H naught Z. So when we do that, we only have two things that we have to solve for. Once we have solutions to those, we simply just plug them into the equations we derived and we have expressions for every single field component. So it'll turn out these are the four equations that do that. And so we don't need to solve these. We obtain a solution to the two Z components and then take those expressions and substitute them into these four. And then we have expressions for all six field components. So let's next derive these. Let's derive the first equation. And what we're going to do is put H naught X in terms of the EZ and the HZ. So to do that, we'll start with equation 1E and we'll solve this for E naught Y. So we're taking the J omega epsilon and bringing it over to the left-hand side of the equations. Now I've switched the left and right-hand side here, but our expression for E naught Y has the one over J omega epsilon times everything else that was on the left-hand side up here. Now we're going to take this expression for E naught Y and plug that in for E naught Y into equation 1A. So if I just blindly do that, here's my expression for E naught Y. Now, if I simplify, there's two occurrences of H naught X. So I'll solve that equation for H naught X. And now I have an expression for H naught X completely in terms of E naught Z and H naught Z. I did do a substitution where K squared is omega squared mu epsilon. You've seen that before, so that's no surprise. So here's one equation where we put H naught X in terms of E naught Z and H naught Z. So we'd have to do this three more times. So let's derive these other three. I'll do this a little bit more abbreviated, but starting with those same six equations at the top of the previous slide, we'll solve equation 1D for E naught X, and then substitute that expression into equation 1B. When we do that, we get an equation for H naught Y in terms of E naught Z and H naught Z. So we have two now, H naught X and H naught Y, two more to do. If we solve equation 1B for H naught Y, and then substitute that new expression into equation 1D, and then solve it for E naught X, now we get E naught X in terms of E naught Z and H naught Z. One more to do. We'll take equation 1A, solve it for H naught X, take that expression, plug it into equation 1E, and then solve for E naught Y. Now we have E naught Y in terms of E naught Z and H naught Z. So we've derived all four equations. We've put all four of the tangential components in terms of the two longitudinal components. Now I'm going to define a cutoff wave number. We keep seeing this K naught squared minus beta squared, where K is the wave number and beta is the phase constant. And we keep seeing this difference. So for now, it's just a substitution of variables. We're gonna call it KC squared. This will have more meaning later on. Right now, it's just a substitution. That lets us write these four equations that we just derived a little bit more simply because we had a K squared minus beta squared on the outside, and now it's just a KC squared. So we have all four components, the tangential components, in terms of the longitudinal components, written a little bit more compactly. So we're not gonna touch those anymore. This will be the final set of four equations that once we have solutions for E naught Z and H naught Z, we can plug them into these four to get expressions for the other field components.
Now, recall back, this is where we make the jump to linear homogeneous isotropic. Up to now, we've not made any approximations. Here is an approximation. Uh, if something is nonlinear, inhomogeneous, or anisotropic, then what we're saying here does not apply. But we had a wave equation, and because it was LHI, each of these vector wave equations decoupled into three sets of independent equations. They were the same equation, so they have the same solution. But the point is, x, y, and z were independent differential equations, which means we need to solve them independently. Yes, we get the same answer, and then we pull them together. When we do that here, and we know that the solution where e, z will be e naught z, e to the minus j beta z, and the same thing for h, z. So we, we know the forms of the final solutions. And if we plug those into our two wave equations, we now have two wave equations in terms of just the h naught z and e naught z and this cutoff wave number, which we haven't really talked about intuitively yet. It's just a substitution of variables up to now. So we have two independent differential equations that we could solve for e z or h z or both. So let's summarize where we are and how we would analyze a waveguide. So somehow we would obtain solutions for E naught Z and H naught Z. For LHI media, these are two separate independent equations. If they were not linear, were not homogeneous, were not isotropic, we could not separate these equations and it would be a more complicated analysis. But even if it was a more complicated analysis, somehow we could obtain a solution to E naught Z and H naught Z. Given those solutions, we can then plug those answers into these four equations that we had and get expressions for all the other field components. So that greatly simplifies our analysis because we just have two things we need to solve for and we can write everything else in terms of those expressions. Here is how I like to map out waveguide analysis. The most difficult, if it is nonlinear, inhomogeneous, or anisotropic, all six field components are coupled and it becomes a difficult analysis. So neither EZ or HZ is zero. We have to solve for both of them. And even if we did this code, and typically this is done on a computer numerically, even this can actually analyze all the other cases because this is the most difficult. It's just that you would have done unnecessary calculations and done it in a less efficient way. But those are called hybrid modes when you have all six field components. If we're analyzing transmission lines and there's a homogeneous dielectric, so that transmission line supports TEM modes, since that's TEM, both E naught Z and H naught Z is zero. But there's conditions for that, right? It has to be a transmission line, homogeneous feel. Uh, but that's an easy analysis. We can do that with electrostatics, and you'll also see how a field analysis can also take us there. Now, if we have a waveguide that's not a transmission line and it has a homogeneous fill, E naught Z and H naught Z are independent equations. That means there will be a solution for H naught Z when E naught Z is zero. And likewise, there'll be a solution for E naught Z when H naught Z is zero. And that's the origin of the TE and the TM modes. When E naught Z is zero, the electric field is completely tangential to the direction of propagation, and we call that a TE mode. Likewise, when H naught Z is zero, the H field is completely tangential to the direction of propagation, which is Z. So we call that a TM mode. And then last, we've been talking about channel waveguides. There's also slab waveguides. And one of the dimensions is completely infinite, infinite extent. And in this case, the math simplifies down to something one dimensional. And in fact, Maxwell's equations decouple into two independent sets of modes. And one we would call E, or, sorry, one we would call TE, the other we would call TM. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EMPossible. I want to create more videos and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. 
I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.